All right, yeah, this is a uh, real Ghana boxing man. We're welcoming Ronnie Shields, man, one of the great trainers. Uh, appreciate your time, brother. No problem, man. No problem. Yeah. So how how you been, man? Is is you coming off of a a big victory? Uh, one of your fighters, man, Jamal, defended his WBC uh, on that was it, September twenty sixth against Dervianchenko. How how you feeling? Feeling great, man. We did a he did a great job. He uh, stuck to the game plan, and he. He did what he was supposed to do to, to keep the title. Yeah, I mean, that was was that your first uh like COVID fight, I should say, or was that like no, I should it's my it's my third COVID fight. Oh, okay. Who who were the other two? I forgot that. Uh, Justin Paulo and um uh this other kid, Tristan Cackrook. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So you, so you, I guess, so you used to that process. It's like, isn't it kind of weird with no fans, man? It's like kind of. Yeah, you I mean, of? it's you know, but it's you know, you really don't really see the. I mean, you you, you don't feel like there's no fans there because oh. you're so focused on your fighter and giving them instructions and telling them what to do and stuff like that. And I mean, it's really, really, man. It's it's really nice that you know it actually feel like fans are there. Oh really? Oh okay. I mean, and, and like um, like th this 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 particular fight with uh, Derianchenko, man. Like, um, I mean, how did you see Derianchenko before coming? Because I mean, Derianchenko is a tough match for anybody. You know, he he damn near. I think he either he sl slightly beat Golovkin or they gave they gave it to Golovkin, but it was like a tough fight um going into the fight what did you think like you guys were coming against well i mean you know look, we know the guy was tough we know that he had a lot of amateur fights like over 400 amateur fights going into you know his amateur career and then you know 15 professional fights so he felt jeffrey chico actually kept saying that his experience was going to be too much for jamal you know but I didn't feel that way. I just felt that Jamal was definitely a bigger guy, the stronger guy, the faster guy. And I felt that we just box him on the outside, you know, that, you know, we was going to be okay. And also when we got, when he got inside, you know, just to let him know that Jamal not a fight in the inside also. So, mm -hmm. and we did, we did both of those things. Yeah. And I, that's what I was going to ask you because uh, some, well, on the one point, um, you know, he had fought Daniel Jacobs. He don't get enough credit, man. Darian Chang don't get enough credit, and the guy is tough. So the way how I was, this I was a uh, really appreciated uh, 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 Jamal work with with that guy because he was able to convincingly like show us that he dominated him. And, you know, it was a tough hearing. It uh, we call a uh, it was close swing rounds, you know. But for the most part, we know who won, and we can't, you know, other than the Jacobs fight. We can't. We couldn't tell that in the Golovkin fight. So it's it's really impressive that how Jamal played that out. Um, uh, uh, the inside fighting, it it, it was tough. Wasn't it tough? Or what, did you did you have to make an adjustment because he was he's really like pressuring, you know, and and he's in there, and he's like doing quick quick shots, like quick. So what, what, is there an adjustment that you have to tell Jamal or? Well, I mean, not really. Mm -hmm. I told Jamal when he got close. I said, look, fight with him in the inside. Because you're the bigger, stronger guy. So let him know that you're there. So and he did that. And he, he actually he backed he backed Darren Chico off, you know, a lot. You know, he he really caught him with a lot of good shots. You know, the uppercut was there for Jamal okay. all yeah. night long. And he busted him up with the uppercut. You know, and you know, really and truly, if I was in the opposite corner, I probably would have stopped it around the tenth, eleventh round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the uppercut was very. It was a signature. Uh, at, to that fight. Um, it, it was a, the right hand. He had a serious. You know, he the jab was. You know that that jab though, man was. <laughs> I know that's something that y'all been working on for a while, and that's very. It, it showed. Um, that was. I, I was very. I was very impressed, man. That was one of the best fights I've seen in a while. Cause that, those two middleweights, you know, yeah, it's always bringing good fights. Middleweights, historically speaking, and up to date. So. I mean, it was another enjoyable one, you know. Now, I mean, I'm thinking like he's he Jamal's a WBC, you know, the the super. Like, how, how frustrating is it that we have some rule with the WBC where they have some what do you call a franchise thing, and 
and and we just don't have no clarity on like who's the real WBC. <laughs> <laughs> Who do? Well, it's like this, man. Uh-huh. You know, Jamal is the real champion. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. The franchise champion, but you know that's Canelo. You know, I can't. You know, everybody knows Canelo's a good fighter. You know, I mean, no ifs ands and buts about it. You know, but. He had a mandatory against Jamal. He didn't want to take it. So they made him a franchise champion. Okay, so what? But they bend so many rules for, for Canelo that they wouldn't do for a lot of other people. And it's not fair to a lot of the fighters that's out there. You know, like you know, like Canelo, he's the WBA champion, never defended it, hmm. moved up in weight for two other weight classes, you know, light heavyweight and super middleweight. Never defended, but he's still champion, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know how many other guys can do that? Mm-hmm. Not many guys can do. They will let do that, you know. But it's understandable because, you know, he makes a lot of money, and he he pays these organizations some good money. So, if you're going to pay to keep the belt, that's what they do. They let you pay to keep it without defending it. Anybody else gets stripped. <laughs> That's, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's a sad reality, man. Uh, but uh, th- let me to put a cap on that fight. Um, uh, well, actually, let me ask you. You know, this fight is it was a good win. Um, what like what, in your mind, who you think is like an immediate? Ma- I mean, I know it's hard. You're not a matchmaker. You know, you're a coach. But like we, you know, in reality, are we looking at uh, uh Eubanks Jr. Or are we looking at like what do you think? Like just throw it out there. Well, I can. mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You know, I think right now we're just trying to enjoy this win. You know, we'll sit on this win for a little bit. And then, you know, when it's time for Jamal to get back in the ring, then then we'll pull up a list of guys and, and we'll see what's the best fight for Jamal next. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, and, who knows uh, what that's going to be? I mean, I don't know. Who knows who's going to be? Uh, uh, I mean, it's hard to tell because the Canelo fight can happen. If he gets out of his contract with his own, and if he doesn't, it still can happen. You know, it depends on what he wants to do, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but we still got options, you know. The thing about it, that we didn't have to take this fight against Sir, Sergey Dervinchenko mm-hmm. because he was the number one contender, but he wasn't a mandatory contender. We didn't have to take this fight, but Jamal won it. Serge, Sergey Jovanchenko, because he felt like he was the best guy in the, in the division outside of him, so he chose him, you know, and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Hey, can you can you did he tell did Jamal ever tell you like what he was like? Man, did he say something like positive from Jovanchenko as far as what he, he he was surprised about, or did he give you anything like? No, he just said, "Hey, everything they said about the kid is true. Mm-hmm. He's tough as hell." He said, man, I had to do with everything, and he kept coming. You know, he said, man, this is a true fighter. He said, I was, I was glad I was able to share the ring with him. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing me. Some people just, like, kind of discredit Derrinchenko because he had the Jacobs fight, the, the Golovkin. But it, it is... It just, uh, you know, it just shows like, you know, these middleweights, man, they're all good. I mean, at least the ones that are the fighting, you know, Jamal and Derrinchenko. So it's like, it just is a great win, you know, and, and that's 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 uh, yeah, that's, that's what I thought about. That it was a great win. Yeah, um, it, huh? it was a great win. It was. Mm-hmm. It was a really good win. You know, a lot of people didn't give Jamal a chance to win that fight. They felt that, uh, you know, that that Dervinchenko was going to be too much for Jamal, but you know, Jamal showed him. Did, did did you do you know uh, Andre Rozier? Did y'all chat about it? Did y'all talk or do you, is that like a friendly yeah, competition or? No, I always talk to Andre when I see him. Uh huh. You know, he he called me his big brother. Mm. You know, and I've been knowing him for a long for a lot of years. You know, but you know he he just thought he he was saying some things before the fight, like all Jamal do is jab. Well, you know he does. He jabs a lot, and mm. you have to figure out how to get around that jab. And just like so many people, they couldn't. So mm. that's on them. You know, yeah. if you know my guy jab a lot and you don't teach your guy to get out of the way of that jab, then you got a problem. 
I mean, I mean, Jermaine Taylor j- did, you know, a thousand jabs, you know, him and uh, Klitschko, they, they was, you know, those type of fighters. I mean, that's the, the fundamental, you know, that was a, that's the setup, you know. <laughs> oh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Did you, did you get a chance to watch uh, Jamel Rosario? Did you watch that? Yeah, I did. I watched it. I, I stayed uh, there and I watched it. Watch uh, that fight. What's your quick thoughts on uh, just how that 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 played out? Well, you know, I, I thought Jamel would stop him late, mm. and he did. You know, but I don't think anybody expected for him to jab to the body and stop him. But you know, sometimes things fall into place. You know, he caught him at the in the right spot at the right time, and you know, mm. it's what it is. I, but I never thought Jamel would, could lose that fight. You know, because I just thought, you know, when you look at both fighters, you look at the the competition that each each one of them had, you know, and I never thought Jamel was in was was going to lose that fight. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he dropped him early, and then yeah, I mean, it just to me, you know, yeah, these this is definitely a different level of uh, skill there. Rosario, he, he came in, you know, as, as it comes time coming in wild sometimes, like a um, well, but I mean, but that's that's his style, though. yeah. His style, yeah, you know, that's just his style, mm. you know. But look, the guy was champion of the world, yeah, he was, you yeah. know. So, look, I mean, if, if you go back and look at the fight, you know, the rounds he didn't get knocked down, knocked down in, he won. Mm. So, you know, the, remember, you know, just because you get knocked down, there's two points against you, so he had four points against him going into that eight round, but. He still he won like four rounds, so the fight was close. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't a one sided fight at all, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I, I didn't get I, I gave Jim. I mean, I I thought Jamel wouldn't have an issue really. I mean, because I I can't bet against Jamel, man. When they're on top, you gotta give them the credit, you know. And those two brothers, man, they they. I mean, I don't see anyone beating them. I, mean, I don't even know if Canelo could. Canelo's not gonna come out undefeated if he tries either one of them, you know. I, I mean. Well, you know, in, in, in this day and age, man, it's mm-hmm. hard to go undefeated mm-hmm. in this day and age. You know, so many good fighters out there, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, a lot of the fighters just don't get that opportunity to be showcased, you know. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, boxing is a tough business, man. And mm-hmm. if you're not on your A game every single time, you know, you, you, know, you get beat. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think Jamel or Jamal was in any risk of losing their titles on on uh, the 26th. You know, I thought that, you know, they had both had really good competition in front of them, but I just thought that both guys were just too much for the other guy. And, you know, and it worked out that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, and, you know, uh, I mean, I, I want to change topics. Uh, not, I mean, not change. It's still boxing, but I want to sw- switch to a whole nother, uh a discussion because I I know you read and I know you know your your friend uh uh, uh Mark Breland got uh let go by Wilder's team uh you, you have any thoughts on that man uh what do you think about you know I, I talked to Mark today you know mm-hmm. uh, him me and Mark talk a lot but look here's the thing mm-hmm. you know Mark Breland did what any trainer would do to save his fighter you know you you know you you know over the years that you, you know, you train a guy, you get to know his habits, you get to know him personally, you know, and you realize that this is a business. But at the same time, you have to have a heart. You know, a lot of fighters keep saying, oh, I want to go out on my shield, I want to go out on my shield. But it depends on how you go out on your shield. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're taking a beating, that could be life-threatening. And... I tell everybody watching that fight, I would have stopped the fight sooner. I wouldn't even given him that kind of opportunity that Mark gave him. Mark let him go as 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 long as he could go because Mark know that Deontay can hit you with one punch and knock you out. Mm-hmm. That that's what he know. He knows this. But at the same time, he saw Deontay taking too many punches. He saw Deontay get dropped. And he saw him getting hurt. So why let a man take a beating when he don't have to? You know, you can live the fight another day. You know, 
Last year, in the sport of boxing, four guys were killed in, inside of that ring. That's a lot of people. Yeah. One is too many. Mm -hmm. Four, we lost four people. And as a result of them getting beat up, you mm -hmm. know, that's just the, that's the way it is. That's our sport, you know. Mm -hmm. And if we don't protect these fighters, so many fighters will be hurt. This is why you have a referee in there. Mm -hmm. Look, the referee was about to stop the fight. He was about to jump in, but it just so Mark beat him to the draw. And as a fighter, you know, being myself as an ex-fighter, you know, I would want, I would be more than happy to have someone in my corner who gave a shit about me. Hmm. I don't want nobody in my corner who don't give a damn about me. That's just plain simple facts. You know, hmm. go out on your shield, what's that? <laughs> Number one, you shouldn't have cut in there with a big heavy suit on. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Who you blame for that? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're looking to blame somebody. And you're looking all over. And you blame the guy who cares about you. Someone who knows that, who knows you and knows that you didn't have it that night. Okay, the man made a call. He made a judgment call on your behalf. He probably saved your life. Again, we lost four people last year in the ring. He would have been the first one this year if that wouldn't happen. So he should be thanking Mark Vreeland, not finding. And, and, and was Mark was had Mark been with Deontay his whole career, like his whole pro, pro career? Uh, not not for the first few fights. So that's but, over like okay, that's Mark that's like, got there early though. Over like thirty fights, man, and one he takes one loss, and he's making this dramatic change is, is very I, I can't respect that man and, and they're using him as a scapegoat which i don't i don't understand why well everybody look for excuses all the time yeah you know but the thing about it when you when you're a team you win together and you lose together you know look it's hard in the sport of boxing to go undefeated that's that hardly happens in this sport you know sometimes you have a bad night okay but <laughs> Just because you have a bad night, that's not the end of the world. You can always come back. Everybody wants to win all the time. Yes, we do. We all want to win all the time. You know? I mean, yeah. who wants to lose? Nobody wants to lose. Everybody yeah. wants to win. But sometimes things happen, and it ain't your night. You yeah. know? And you have to know it ain't your night. So you know what? You live to fight another day. And Mark gave him that opportunity to turn around and say, you know what? We're going to be better next time. But he gets mad because the guy did his job. You know, you don't, only, you don't just only pay a guy to train you. You pay a guy to look out for you, to make sure that you're okay inside of that ring. This is why you train so much and train so hard. You train for this. Mm -hmm. But when it ain't there, it ain't there. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And you get mad and fight a guy? You know what? I would never go back if mm -hmm. that was me. Mm -hmm. Breland, has he has he mentioned anything specific? or, or you, No, not at all. He yeah. just, you know, Mark is a mom man and a guy. Yeah. And he said, you know what? It is what it is, you know. I know what I did for him. I trained him one way. He did it. He tried to fight another way. You know, that's not Mark, Mark's fault. It's hmm. the fighter's fault. You know? Yeah. He, he never got a chance to make adjustments, you know, or anything. And, you know, I mean, look, he, was, he got beat down from, from the very first round. So it, it's hard for a guy to stick to a game plan when things are going wrong for him, right from the very beginning. Then, you know, I don't know, I don't know what their plan was. I never asked Mark what his plan was. But, you know, but it's easy to see that Deontay did he made no adjustments, hmm. none whatsoever. You know? And well, when it ain't there, it's not there. That's yeah. simple as that. But 
you know, he's acting like he's Superman that he ain't ever supposed to lose. You're a human being. All human beings lose. Yeah. Yeah, it's how you, it's how he, he rebounds off this, uh, you know. Absolutely, it, it's better to you because I mean, get, get, he gives himself a chance to rebound, not not to take a such damage that I mean, he can't even like be eighty percent himself. I mean, it, yeah, he, he'll look. I'm sure he'll look back and you know, be like, man, that was bad. I shouldn't have uh, did that to him, man. But um, I mean, you know, anyways, that's old. I mean, we'll see. Hope all the best to him, man. Hopefully, Mark Breed. I, I mean, I'm surprised that does he coach anyone else or is he? Do you know? Well, you know, he's he's working with a few guys right now. Okay. But you know, Mark is gonna always be involved in the sport of boxing. Mm. Okay. Uh, let, let me let me I got two questions, man. Two two left, man. Um your your thoughts, man, on uh, you know, we got Lomachenko coming up fighting uh Teofimo Lopez, man. Uh I mean, I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to that fight. Uh what, what do you think? Well, I think a lot of people are looking forward to this fight. Mm. You know, you got two 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 of the best guys in the division, and they're doing what they're supposed to do, fight each other. And, you know, with me, I think Lomachenko is the favorite. And I just don't see this guy losing anytime soon. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy is a hell of a hell of a fighter. And but it should be a great fight. It's gonna be a fan friendly fight. And I think people should tune in and watch it. You know, with, with an experienced guy like Lomachenko, um, we know that Teofimo got early. You know, he got power, and he, well, one one of my Ghanaian brothers, uh, Kome, you know, he stopped him in two rounds. But do you talk about the how the difficulty of 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 getting lucky against a guy? Is it possible? I mean, anything's possible, but a guy that experienced, he's not going to take certain chances. I mean, you think what is your uh, opinion on an early knockdown in that fight? Is that a possible thing for Loma? I mean, uh. <laughs> Well, it's a possible thing, but you know, look, I mean, look, man, anything can happen yeah. in the sport of boxing. Anybody can get hurt. Anybody can get knocked down. You can get knocked out with a shot that you don't see. I mean, that's one of these things, man, that happens in this sport. So, but I wouldn't go and call it, you know, <laughs> say, hey, you know, Lopez is going to hit him with this and knock him out. Uh, Lomo is going to hit him with this and knock him out. No. You know, the, the, the great thing about the sport of boxing is you have to watch and see what's going to happen. You know, see exactly who's the better fighter at that time, at that night. You know, who can make the adjustments to win the fight. You know, that, that's what the sport is all about, man. You know, if you knew beforehand what was going to happen, you wouldn't turn in to watch. <laughs> I mean, but I just I just think about like the most experienced guys. Like, what is, is there? Is it a common thing that they all you know they don't come out taking chances early? Or, or, or I mean, it just you, you get what you see, or you I mean, you go for what you see, or is it you? Do you commonly see the most experienced guys kind of uh, building up? Like, what? Is, what? Well, I, I tell you like this, man. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime you're involved in a big fight, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be nervous at the beginning. No matter who you are, mm. you're a human being. You have feelings. And if anybody get in there and say, oh, I was never nervous, that's a lie. Everybody gets nervous. But you try not to show your nerves when you're in there. You try to just think about your game plan. And whatever your game plan is, you try to use it right away. Mm. And it happens sometimes that people don't. Some people don't. And, you know, and then some people do. But, you know, the, the most important thing is, is not to show your nerve, to get out there and try to stick to the game plan, whatever your game plan is. You know, if your plan is to stay on the outside and box, let the other guy just come forward. You know, you don't want to have nervous energy going in there. You know, that's one thing you can control. You can control nervous energy, you know, sitting back using your jab, you know, using your head movement. Just, you know, just whatever the case may be. But, you know, but trust me, everybody is nervous when they get in there. But some people handle it better than others. Yeah, they do. Uh, hey, man, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you, man, breaking it down. Uh, I, got, I got one good question for you, man. 
you, you, I know you trained this man, man, for for years. Uh, Mike Tyson, you know, uh, you train, you train him against Lewis, I believe, right? Yeah, Tra- I was against yeah, the Andrew Lewis fight. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I know that was a crazy night. Uh, um, but this, he, he, he's attempting to come back in some kind of exhibition against Roy. Like, what, what do you think about that, Roy Jones? Uh, is, is that, <laughs> is that something you, you like? What is going on here? Well, you know, you got two highly skilled fighters, mm. you know, and they've been out of the ring for a while, but obviously they, you know, they always doing a little something in the gym. You can see that, you know, they keep keep themselves. Mike has gotten himself in great shape. So has Roy. You mm. know, look, there's one thing that you don't lose. It, you know, you're always in your mind know what it's like to be in there. So, yeah. but. Sometimes when you be out for so long, you know, you don't trust the fact that, you know, okay, now I'm about to go in there. You know, I forgot what the nerve factor is. I forgot this, I forgot that. You know, sometimes you forget everything when you've been out the ring for so long. But both of these guys are natural fighters, man. They natural. So, you know, as soon as one of them get hit, you know, everything c- comes back to them. and they're going to go in there and, you know, they show their skills. It's supposed to be an exhibition. The commission has already warned both of them that if anything goes on other than an ex- exhibition, he's going to stop the fight himself because there's not going to be any judges at all. You know, you're just going to have a referee to make sure everything is fair inside of that ring. But, you know, for being out of the ring for so long, you know, the nerves are going to be there. So, you know, although they're going to have 12 ounce gloves on, that's not going to really be make a difference because Mike Tyson can punch with 18 ounce gloves, <laughs> you know? So, you know, if anybody's going to be nervous, it'll probably be Roy be more nervous because Mike is a natural heavyweight and Roy is not. Yeah. How was that? How was that holding the pass with Mike, man? Like when you, you always, in tra- I mean, how was that experience? Actually, I didn't hold a pass with Mike. Oh, uh-huh. Stacey McKinley. He oh. was Mike's pad man. Mm. You know, I got in there, you know, a little, little bit, showed him what I wanted for him to see on the pads, but not really doing, you know, pads with him. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that'd be interesting the uh, outcome there, but uh, huh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Over they, you know, they, it's all good. You know, they they come out of there. Because, you know, over, what, over 50, I believe, or what, late 40s, over 50? So I don't know. It's yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, something else, man. <laughs> this guy is... they, they up to that age right now. Yeah. 